let's talk about why a nest box is important in a rabbit breeding program. So nest boxes offer a safe place for the doe to have her kits. And a nest box ideally should be able to keep kits warm in the winter, but also give them adequate ventilation in the summer and not overheat them. There's a lot of different styles of nest boxes out there. There's drop downs, there's ones that attach to the cage, there are metal nest boxes, but my favorite type of nest box remains to be the wood nest box. It's more versatile, it's easy for me to build, and it's budget friendly, which is a good thing for us. Hey guys, welcome back to Tealstone Homestead. Today I am finishing up making some new rabbit nest boxes. Our old ones are a little beat up, they're all between three and four years old. It is time to make some new and improved nest boxes with a little bit better construction on my part. And we are going to be making them with a piece of one by 12. You can make one really nice nest box with one piece of one by 12 by six, which actually comes out, like if you already have the screws and stuff, comes out to under $15. Her nest box and they're super easy to make i feel like a lot of people get a little bit stressed out when there's angle cuts involved um, but i'm going to show you how to make them how i make them and i'm going to show you just how easy it actually is so i have creme de argents which are a larger meat type rabbit um, i've used these nesting boxes for silver foxes champagnes and harlequins all of them have worked just fine um, so it's really a great nest box design for any of those larger meat breeds. If you have something like a Flemish or something like that, this is probably not gonna be quite big enough for them, but the dimensions can easily be altered if you need to make them larger or smaller. And maybe in the future, I'll actually have plans for those other sizes on my website as well. There will be a blog post in the description down below and all of the dimensions and photos and step-by-step -step instructions will be there for you guys to enjoy for free and hopefully that helps you make your own rabbit nest boxes. Let's go ahead and mark up this board. I'm going to show you how to mark the angles and all of that um, and yeah hopefully you guys will be able to make your own nest box after this video. So our nest boxes are going to be 20 inches long. So with my measuring tape here I'm going to measure and mark right at the 20 inch mark right there. Then I have a square. This thing is literally my best friend when it comes to building. I'm going to line that up and draw a line where that 20 inch mark is. I'm gonna connect it on the other side. So now we have a line showing us that this is 20 inches. Our nest boxes are also 10 inches tall on the side at least. So. And that's good because I've got like a little notch in my wood here and I want to cut that off because I don't want that on my nest box. So that's good. Um, we are going to mark 10 inches up on this line right here and we're going to mark 10 inches up on this on the end right here. I usually use my level as a straight edge um, and just going to line my level up with these two marks that I've made at 10 inches and connect them. And either side here can be our front or back. I'm going to choose that this be the back of the nest box and this be the front. This is the bottom and this is the top. So on the top, we will measure over eight inches. So we're gonna put a dot on the line right here that we've made at eight inches. And then on the front here, we're going to measure up six inches and put another dot. So now we have two dots, one at eight inches over on the top and then one up six inches on the front. We're gonna take our level or straight edge, whatever you use, and then we're going to connect the dots. And that, is going to be our nest box. So front, this is going to be the diagonal part on the side. This is the top, back, bottom. And now I'm going to repeat the same thing over here so that we can cut both sides out at the same time. So now 
that I've got both of my sides drawn on, we are going to use a circular saw and we're going to cut these out and then we'll cut the rest of the pieces out after we do that. So we've got both sides cut out and we are ready to cut the next couple of pieces. So now we are going to start cutting the rest of our pieces. That would be the top, the back, the front, and the lip. And we're going to go ahead and draw all of them out and then cut them all out at the same time. These pieces are easier because all of them are rectangular. First off, I'm going to start with the top and that is 11 inches long and eight inches wide. So put dots at both of those places. I'm just gonna use my straight edge to mark for those. And because there's this knot here, I think I'm just going to go ahead and cut him out because I'm cutting that close enough to where I'm a little bit worried that the knot is gonna pop out on me. So I'm just gonna cut him out, so. This is just blank space. I know that we're wasting a little bit of wood, but I don't want to deal with that. And now I'm going to mark measurements for the back, which is 10 inches and nine and a half inches wide. Go ahead and mark 10 inches down on this side too. So there's our back. Next up is the front, and the front is nine and a half inches by six inches. And last but certainly not least is the lip. And I don't often see a lot of lips on nest boxes, which really worries me because to me they're very important. We've got our top, our back, our front, and our lip and this blank space, just so I don't have to deal with that knot. <laughs> so I'm gonna go ahead and cut all of these out. Alright, so we've got all of our pieces and parts cut out for our new nest box and now it's time to drill some pilot holes in the pieces. Pilot holes are pretty important when you're working with thinner wood like this or plywood just because the wood's more likely to crack and a pilot hole makes sure that it doesn't do that. So it's not necessarily a step that I would skip when I was younger and inexperienced <laughs> building uh, stuff I would skip the whole pilot hole thing just because I didn't care um, But I've grown to take a little bit more pride in my work and I do care now so um, I don't skip the pilot holes anymore um, And I just feel like it makes it look overall Nicer when it's finished. So on your side pieces here, you're gonna want to put a pilot hole at the top at the bottom and probably right or right in the middle around like the five inch mark uh, in the middle there. And then on the front of it, you're gonna wanna put one up top and one on the bottom. And you're gonna wanna do that to both pieces. And then once we get that done, we can attach the back and the front. As you can see, pilot holes are on my side pieces here and the one behind it. Here's the back piece. And then we're gonna take one of our side pieces here and we are going to line this up. Make sure this is the 10 inch side of the back. So what we're gonna do is we're going to take some screws and we're gonna screw in into this back piece here and attach it to the first side. Then we're gonna attach it to the second side and then we'll move on to the front from there. Gonna line that up as best as we can and we're going to screw that in until it tightens. So we've got that first one done there. Be careful because there is a knot in that still. 
but we got it. And now I'm gonna do the middle. Middle is the easiest one to do. So first side is attached to the back there. You flip it around, take our other side here with pilot holes already drilled, and then we're gonna attach our other side to the back. Sometimes when you're attaching the front piece, it helps to uh, flip the nest box over like this. So then when you put your front piece in here, you can actually put some pressure down on here so this isn't moving all over the place. It's a little bit harder since it is um, a smaller piece, but that's what I like to do. and our back attached. It's looking pretty good. Next up is to attach the top here and the top just fits on just like this. Um, we do need to put some pilot holes in it though. So we're gonna do that really fast. And what I like to do is I like to put pilot holes in all four corners plus one in the back here. One thing about putting pilot holes in the top piece here is that you can't really put them right in the corner on the back at least, because if you do, you might end up hitting the first screw that we put in here. You might wanna move it up just a tad bit and put it like right here. So we miss that screw. Here's our box so far that we've made, and then our top, which we've put pilot holes in, one in the center back here, one just a little bit up from the corner on each side here, and then um, one in each of these corners. So the lip is really easy. We just need to drill some pilot holes in it and it goes on like this. And that is just going to be attached there and then one mom jumps in and out of the nest box. If any babies are still attached to her, this helps keep them from spilling out onto your cage floor and essentially chilling and not making it. So this is important. This is a very important step to me. I don't skip out on the lip on the nest box. So I'm gonna go ahead and get that attached. Sorry guys, I can be a terrible YouTuber sometimes because I did not press record when I attached this, but it is pretty self-explanatory. Um, I drill pilot holes in each side and then screw it down. So it looks like this, it's sitting at a diagonal. And this is a very important part in my opinion. Um, but yeah, this is what our nest box looks like. So this is all of the wooden parts, all attached. So you might be saying to yourself at this point that it's not done because we have no bottom. Babies are gonna fall out, which you would be right um, because we're not done yet. For the bottom, I like to use hardware cloth. And some people say to use half inch by half inch hardware cloth. I find that bedding can fall through half inch way too easily. So I use a fourth inch hardware cloth, which looks like this. It is very, very thin. You can actually cut it extremely easy with snips. Some people don't understand why we prefer to use um, wire or metal for the bottom of the boxes. The reason is because once you have so many litters in a nest box, their urine will start to absorb if you put something like a solid wood bottom in um, and it will become impossible to disinfect. And when the baby rabbits burrow down, they have the potential to get eye infections or bacterial infections and stuff like that. So I tend to stick with hardware cloth. One, it allows urine to drain out of the nest box as your babies are growing and peeing. Um, it's gonna stay dry for the most part in the box. And in the summer, if you do breed when it gets warmer outside, this does allow a lot more ventilation, um, which is really nice. It's very easy to disinfect between litters. And in the winter, when it's cold outside, it can be drafty. So I will just put layers of cardboard down and those are more disposable um, 
and it keeps the babies warm and it also it just it keeps them dry for the most part so that's why I like to use hardware cloth this um, a fourth inch hardware cloth is something I don't have to worry about like my babies getting their feet or legs caught in it because there's it's just such small openings um, I've never had a baby get stuck in hardware cloth like this so this is my favorite size and we are going to attach it using lath screws which look like this they are sharp point lath screws. They are made to attach metal to wood. Um, and a lot of people wonder why I don't just use like something like staples or something like that. And the reason is because I like the option of being able to remove the wire flooring if I need to replace it. Or in this instance, this is actually a piece of wire flooring from one of my old nest boxes that I'm simply going to reuse now because I was able to detach it and I don't have to pay for any more wire. So that's why I like to do that. I've got my hardware cloth already measured and cut to size. So now what I'm gonna do is simply attach the wire using my lath screws and the corners of the wire. Just like that. And we're gonna do that all the way around till it's nice and secure. And there you have it guys, we've got our bottom all attached to our nest box. So there you guys have it. We have a brand new nest box for my winter babies to be born in and it looks really good. I'm really pleased with it. So I am very much looking forward to using these nest boxes for my litters born in January. I've got several litters due and I am very excited for it. If you are just getting started into meat rabbits or you needed new nest boxes or whatever the case, I hope this video was helpful to you. And if you didn't know how to make a rabbit nest box or maybe you were searching for different plans, I hope that you enjoy making these. It's just a really easy project to do, especially if you are newer to construction type projects. So guys, if you enjoyed this video, make sure to click the like button down below. And if you want to be notified every time I upload a video or go live, make sure you click the bell. I hardly ever say that, but I'm saying it now. I hope that you guys enjoyed this video and I will see you in my next one. Bye guys. Thank you.